the year 1949, uh, the junior team championship of the Soviet Union takes part in Moscow. The team of Leningrad is led by me. Well, in the team are also future grandmasters, Spassky and Lutikov. Our team won the competition. I paid, well, I made a good contribution, five and a half out of six. Uh, my game I'm going to show you is played will be is played against uh, leader of the team of uh, Russia or Russian Federation. His name is Golinishev, a rather famous name in the Russian history. Uh, the man who fought Napoleon in the year 1812. His name was Golinishev Kutuzov. Well, but they are well. They they are not relatives, okay. So uh, that time, being already a rather strong player, I used to play against the D four only the Dutch defense. I started with uh, with the so called uh, uh, stone wall. The stone wall, uh, you know, they they build the stone wall this way, and uh, well, uh, I, uh, soon I disliked it uh, because, uh, well, because presumably I I didn't know how to fight for the initiative, but um, weaknesses of pawn structure uh, of my pawn structure I felt badly like wounds in my in my own body. So I gave up with uh, with um, Stonewall. Then I started to play uh, to play something else. I I, st I started to play uh, well the system with with G6, which was called and still is called Leningrad system. Yeah, Knight F6, G6, and so on. Uh, yeah. Then I uh, uh, after one or two years I realized that. Nobody understands what what happens in that system, including myself. So I gave up this system, and I came uh, well uh, to play only the modest, the modest D seven D six in the Dutch. So let's continue with the game. <sighs> this move had been played often. Mm, about five, 50 years ago. The point is uh, just to just not to allow the bishop, uh, white, bi white bishop, to be developed uh, conveniently on b2 or a3. Mm, but uh, in fact, this, uh, well, this semi-developing move can turn out to uh, be very useful for white. Th that that might happen. So bishop d2, bishop e7, uh, knight c3, uh, uh, castles, and knight h3. This move, knight h3, was especially good against uh, the stone wall. The knight comes to a four to d three, and, uh, and uh, that that was that was very good. Um, also, it has uh, a point. It has some point against the Leningrad system because there the square e six is very vulnerable. But here, uh, after well, well, perhaps my partner was not aware that I'm I'm going to play d seven d six, so. So, well, anyway, he played knight e3, d6, and uh, knight f4. It is, mm, it is not so strong here. Uh, this is not the best move, c6. Correct was bishop d8, uh, following by uh, e6, c5. Mm, the man who started to analyze this game, to annotate it for, for the magazine, 
well, chess in the USSR, uh, was well-known master Khan, Ilya Khan. Uh, I might say, well, not only Khan, but uh, mm, some stronger people took part in the analysis of this position. Mm, I mean, uh, David Bronstein, who was already a challenger uh, for the World Championship. Two years, mm, two years later, he played the match with Botvinnik and uh, drew the match. Uh, so, David Bronstein took part in the analysis of this game. So, Ilya Khan says that Bishop D7 was correct, and after C6, uh, the, uh, White could play Knight D3 and, uh, and get some advantage. Just, you know, it is like, like it happens, you know. Uh, well, uh, people memorize a play of masters and try to imitate it. And then it turns out it is, well, it is not easy to imitate. It is, um, uh, well, they do uh, allegedly the same, but it doesn't happen. It, well, the result is not the same. So the correct move was, was knight d3, because, uh, because after bishop d8, uh, then bishop f4 would follow, bishop c7, c5 with, with a big advantage to white. Or the other line, the other line would be uh, knight, knight bd7. With a strong pressure of white on the, on the queen side. So in the game, just a normal move had been played, e4, but, uh, well, it is uh, not what uh, a master would have played. Now black almost almost equalizes the position. Hmm. After knight takes e5, bishop c5 or bishop d6, uh, um, white would have some problems uh, um, to protect the knight. So. Mm, so, the correct move is uh, knight takes a4. Uh, here, uh, white could try to take on f6. After knight takes f6, Uh, black has to take with the with the bishop. Mm. Now, after b4, rook f7, bishop e4, white would have had a uh, white would have had a clear edge. Because of that, after bishop b4, the correct move is e4. Bishop takes the rook, pawn takes the knight takes on a8, takes on a8, bishop b3, knight b6. Due to strong pawn d3, why uh, black has a full compensation for sacrificed exchange. Master Khan criticizes this essential move and says, says that uh, the correct move would be Rook A E1, threatening to continue the assault in the center by no, F2, F4. Here, um, again, um, Khan says that the correct move is rook d1 with, um, with about equal play um, um, for, for both sides. Instead, my uh, young partner uh, took the pawn. Question mark. 
I say uh, in my uh, commentary, greediness will be punished. Bishop before exclamation. White position is already desperate. The threat is bishop takes c4 and knight of c check. And so knight b4, as it, as it is in uh, always uh, in chess, where some piece um, stands, uh, say, awkwardly, it becomes a tactical threat. And this, uh, you will see it in the, in the following um, variations. Okay, he played a four, and now, because of common sense, there's, a, there's such a book, Common Sense in Chess, mm, written by Emmanuel Laska. Well, because of common sense, I just took on e4 with uh, some advantage. Instead, David Bronstein pointed, pointed out that black could win a piece by the move knight g4. Well, the next move is first, bishop takes a five, queen takes a five, and now after queen f3, rook takes, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, queen c5 check, and then queen takes before attacking the rook e1. So white, white lost a piece. Oh, uh, rook d8. Uh, now, if queen e2, then rook e8. A queen has to go to f3, and then the same. Take on a, takes on the one, queen c5, and takes takes the knight. So, let's try. Let's try uh, the. Queen d2, queen c3, now, now a5, knight c2, rook d3, queen has no retreat, knight d4, queen h5, threaten you mate in two, and threatening to take the queen, black is winning. All the variations belong to the challenger, world challenger, David Bronstein. Um, this move was criticized. Well, the move is, uh, has an aim just to, well, somehow to exchange the bishop before. Some, well, if possible. So, knight d3 and the next move, uh, he, he will attack the bishop. And uh, uh, Kahn and Bronstein with him are criticizing the move and suggesting queen d2 instead. This is, you know, why is it so difficult to, uh, to analyze uh, the game of somebody. Well, when I when I play, I'll, I understand what, what what happens, and I can. Mm, I, I, I'm ve I'm then I'm I'm very good. I know I know how to. Mm, well, where where are end beginning of end and the end of the variations, and when I start to to annotate the other game game of uh, somebody else, it is difficult and uh, and. Uh, can you imagine that Bronstein also made the mistake and considered queen d2 the best move? Mm. Whereas here, black wins force, forcingly by the move rook f3. Let's say, uh, well, after rook e3, the threat, is, the threat is to take on g3. After rook e3, black is playing queen g5. Uh, rook e1 and bishop g6 winning 
Yeah, winning. Or uh, say instead of rookie three, rookie two, then uh, rook takes g3, takes, takes, uh, king f1, rook f5 check, uh, rook f2, queen g2 check, king e1, queen g1 winning. Or this is also uh, something. Queen d8, rook e8. Qu after queen c7, a tricky move, a7, f, a5 wins the game. Because, well, the knight is hanging. The knight has no retreat. And after queen takes a5, rook takes g3 is winning on the spot. So that is that. Is that, that uh, well, something was uh, analyzed, well, by me, uh, uh, mostly, and, uh, well, still some variations belong to David Bronstein. Okay. Knight d3 looks uh, equalizing, uh, so I, I needed to find uh, one, two strong moves. Uh, this is the first move. If he takes only four, then rook f1, and winning something, winning something, it's clear. So he played, uh, and the threat is, well, there are many threats here. Um, so rook f3, for example. So he played mm, logical move. Let's see five. Now, if I take on c5, then uh, he takes on e4. Well, there is there is nothing, almost nothing to, as Americans say, to write home about. Also, so I found an, another way. I played uh, this move. And now, if, if he would take on f2 twice, then after queen f5, white... White has uh, mm, strongest, well, black has strongest attack, winning attack. Yeah, yeah, and uh, if uh, if he takes if he takes on e4 now, queen takes e4, then there is a move queen h5, attacking pawn h2, and winning a piece on c5, and we, with the rook on f2, uh, well, white, white cannot uh, resist for long. So this is also clear. So in this position, he made his mind up just to give up a queen. Well, what can we say about this position? Queen is stronger than uh, rook and knight. Mm, well, in order to prove it, it is necessary to organize um, active play on both flanks. And then, uh, well, then Queen will be, um, will work everywhere at, at the same time, whereas um, White will have a lot of problems. Uh, sometimes, in some positions, a fortress can be built up, uh, and uh, well, one should should be aware of it. And uh, let's say here, the best would be just to play h6, just to prepare everything and slowly, slowly, um, well, to start to um, to start to do to, to to strengthen the position of black on both sides. Instead, I played a careless move, h5. I played this, uh, and h5. Wrong. Because here he could, he could play h2, h4. Well, it is not difficult to defend the only weakness on g3, with the king, with knight, with eventually with the rook. But also, the knight would get a very good square g5. So it is. It would. It would be questionable whether this position won or not. 
uh, yeah. Uh, well, this at this position, my my opponent has not realized it and played b3. Okay. Well, here, here is uh, everything is clear. There is no no opportunity to uh, to build a fortress. And here he he makes a move. Well, which he had to pl to make on the king side instead of played it on the queen side. But but for that he does not have enough um, forces to protect the weakness weakness b3. So the game is the game is over. Well, he played. Okay. They say it doesn't work properly. I played queen f4. Now when he takes, well, then I take and uh, um, and pawn b3 is lost. It, it is obvious. So he tried something else. At the moment, rook takes g7 is a threat. Well, it's mutual time trouble. And... Uh, well, normally here rook takes g3 is winning, then takes on g3, then takes the pawn b3. Well, there is, um, well, there is something, something else. Uh, queen, queen d2 is a strong move. Well, instead, instead I played something. Well, I play, I gave check, and and played. Well, again after. Rook takes b3, knight f5 should be considered. Yeah, so so I played queen b2. And here, say, greediness of my partner, well, <laughs> finally, finally played his decisive role. He took on b7 and, and the game suddenly was over. Instead, after knight, knight e4, After knight e4, who could render a strong, strong resistance? I believe five, then rook, king h6, uh, and, or rook, rook f5, and then rook g1, then, uh, uh, then uh, king h6, or b7, b6, and, uh, well, white, uh, mm, White certainly will struggles for um, to make it, well, to to survive, but uh, um, he has some he has some chances, good chances. Instead, after Rook B seven, uh, he gets ex exposed to the final mating attack. Queen F three is a threat. Resigned. No defense. This was the, well, my perhaps very first game which drew attention of grandmasters of the Soviet Union. The first, well, frankly, not the last one.